On the 15th of June 2010, following the publication of the Savile Report into Bloody Sunday, when 14 innocent people were shot dead in Derry on the 30th of January 1972, I stood here and said, There is no doubt, there is nothing equivocal, there are no ambiguities. What happened on Bloody Sunday was both unjustified and unjustifiable. It was wrong. My use of the phrase, what happened, does not exonerate those who committed murder that day, nor those who ordered it, nor those who covered it up. What happened should never, ever have happened. The families of those who died should not have had to live with the pain and the hurt of that day and with a lifetime of loss. Some members of our armed forces acted wrongly. The government is ultimately responsible for the conduct of the armed forces, and for that, on behalf of the government, indeed on behalf of our country, I am deeply sorry. I am deeply sorry would mean very little if not followed up by judicial action. In fact, it would encourage a culture of systemic impunity within the armed forces and our system of governance that would be indefensible. Therefore, I have ordered a criminal investigation to bring to justice those whom I declared here in this house in June 2010 ultimately responsible for murderous acts. This will be followed by the accusation before a court of law of those still living who planned the attack, those who ordered it, those who carried it out, and those who covered it up. Accordingly, Mr. Speaker, I now name those who stand accused of complicity in the murders of Bloody Sunday. In this house, Edward Heath, Prime Minister of the day, ultimately responsible for the armed forces. Reginald Maudling, Home Secretary of the day. Lord Carrington, Defence Secretary of the day. Lord Balneal, Minister of State for Defence in 1972 with responsibility for the army. Sir Alec Douglas Home, the Foreign Secretary who disseminated the cover-up to our embassies worldwide. In our armed forces, General Sir Michael Carver, then Chief of General Staff, British Army. General Sir Ian Freeland, then General Officer Commanding Northern Ireland. General Sir Frank Kitson, then Brigadier in Belfast, who deployed the Parachute Regiment to Derry to attack a civil rights demonstration. Major General Robert Ford, Commander of Land Forces Northern Ireland, who devised the plan of action and supervised its implementation. Finally, General Sir Michael Jackson, second in command of the paratroopers entering the bog side, stands indicted. The document he wrote on the evening of Bloody Sunday, known as the Shot List, formed the basis for the worldwide cover-up of the atrocity. That the man who rose to be Chief of General Staff may have been rewarded rather than punished for such a vile act opens such an appalling vista that it demands the most rigorous inspection in the highest court of law. Mr. Speaker, these 10 men were in those same positions of ultimate responsibility six months earlier, when in Ballymurphy, Belfast, 11 innocent civilians were killed by the Parachute Regiment in a three-day period in August 1971. Let there be no equivocation. The dead and wounded of Bloody Sunday were innocent one and all, gunned down in their own streets by soldiers who had been given to believe that they could kill with impunity. I trust that this pledge of action, though late in coming, will help make reparation for what our country's armed forces did on Bloody Sunday. Without it, my declaration of sorrow in 2010 would not only ring hollow, it would exonerate men of high status who far from being brought to book were richly rewarded for their part in the murders of Bloody Sunday. And that, we must all agree, would be completely inexcusable.